there are people who talk about raising your frequency, your vibration. Good, good, good. What frequency are you at right now? Do you know? If you don't know where you are, how do you know where you're going? Define ascension. Define raising your vibration. What does that mean to you? What, do you want to fly? Move objects with your mind? You want to teleport from room to room like Dr. Strange? You want to travel the stars using your mind and rematerialize on some other planet? Do you want an increase in intelligence, raising your IQ to that of a genius and beyond? A higher state of consciousness? Do you want to be able to heal those around you who are sick with only the touch of your hands? Read minds, maybe? I know. You want to know the secrets of the cosmos. You want to become a master of the universe. What is your definition of ascension? What is it that you want to become? You want the cosmic forces of the universe to unlock your hidden abilities? We all want love. We all want to live in a peaceful world without the nightmares. Well, most of us anyway. But we will all have to go through the trials and tribulations because these dark forces are strong and they absolutely want you to fail. And you're going to have to condition yourself through the changing weather. So I want to get into the discussion of magnetic energy, the human magnetic field, how it works and what you can do with it. I want to talk about the law of attraction, the mind and its effects on our planet. There is energy in all things, but what is its driving force? Why does the wind blow? Why do the rivers flow? What causes it to rain or snow? What fuels this planet, giving rise to its vegetation and vast wildlife? It is the same force that fuels human energy, magnetism, electrical current. It gives us the ability to think to turn on our lights, drive our cars, and operate our televisions, laptops, and portable devices. Without this source, it is probable that none of these things would be possible. And that source, my friends, is the sun. Think of it this way. Our bodies are vessels. They are extensions of the earth. We are the earth. Do you understand? We are the walking, talking, thinking, speaking, fighting, hating, and loving part of the earth. Our bodies, we are electric light beings held together in sacred geometric form by magnetism that run on the power of the sun. The spirit, depending on who you ask, is the pilot, and that comes from another source, depending on what you believe. And you should not be concerned with leaving your body. As I see, there are a few who are. You see, one of the problems I have with all this is that there are plenty of people who think that they are destined to leave the Earth. I don't know what's so bad about Earth. I mean, aside from the system that we live in, this is a beautiful, amazing place like no other. Why do you think the angels wanted to come here in the first place? But I want to know what's out there. What about other dimensions? Nothing's out there. Nothing for you. There is nothing out there but concern. Now that can be discussed, and it will, but we need to first be grateful for what was given to us here, not for what we can get out there. Now, this energy that we get from the sun cannot come from the direct energy alone because things move. We think, we move and expend energy. So, 
we must eat food. We must consume fuel. So we have to eat the light energy of the sun through vegetation, which is just an edible form of photons. But we don't consume all vegetation that has this energy. Now we don't walk around eating grass, but grazing animals do. And so their meat is a secondary form of this light energy. Do you see? Photosynthesis is the transformation of visible light energy into consumable fuel. The plant takes carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to form a carbohydrate molecule that we then consume for calories or energy that creates heat. Energy from the photons that are released from the chemical bond once digested. So this is why vegetation that absorbs a lot of sunlight such as citrus fruits, leafy greens, and algae are probably the healthiest foods you can eat. This is also why honey is such a miraculous food. I like to think of it as liquid sunlight. So now with this energy that we measure in calories, our bodies can produce electricity. Each atom in the human body has protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, when an atom has an unbalanced charge, it will either become positively charged or negatively charged. This transition allows electrons to flow freely from one atom to another. This flow is electricity. The way this works is electrolytes such as sodium and potassium move freely in and out of the cells. When the positively charged sodium ions move into the cell, the negatively charged potassium ions move out of the cell. This change in the charge creates an electrical pulse. This has a domino effect as it causes the next cell to open up, allowing sodium and potassium ions to move in and out freely. This is how pain works. When you smash your thumb with a hammer, that electrical pulse travels along the nerve that senses pain all the way to your brain. This should give you a good idea of how fast that whole process works. These electrical signals cause your muscles to contract and your heart to beat. They also allow you to think. Food is a combination of light energy from the sun and the elements of the earth. So as the sun charges us up, we can use the earth to ground us. You see, we already know that there is a pretty consistent resonant frequency of the earth. The earth also has a powerful negative charge, meaning it has a abundance of electrons. So when you stand on the ground barefoot for about an hour and a half, those electrons in the earth are absorbed through the soles of your feet and enter the bloodstream. The idea here is to keep your body at the same negative charge of the earth because our bodies are the earth. And when those two charges are off, your body builds up with free radicals and you're likely to get sick. The electrons absorbed from the earth take out those free radicals, reducing inflammation and pain. You get better sleep, an increase in energy, and you don't age as fast. It thins the blood, improving the flow of oxygen. It also helps to alleviate the stress caused by electromagnetic fields. Wi-Fi, cell phones, laptops, and that's just the beginning. Because see, our bodies can get charged up and often overcharged. I encourage you all to watch a powerful documentary film entitled The Grounded by Steve Crochelle. Now, I don't want to spoil the movie and I believe you will appreciate the information more if you see it presented there. A few of you may find the information presented in the movie to be life-changing. If you want a good overview of what grounding yourself can do, watch the film. So with that said, I want to discuss magnetism. Now there are three main types of magnets. Permanent magnets, which is divided into four categories. One, neodymium iron boron magnets. These are made of rare earth magnetic materials that tend to be very strong but brittle. So they are manufactured to be quite small and plated with either gold, iron, or nickel. Two, samarium cobalt magnets. These magnets are also very strong, but more expensive as they have a resistance to oxidation and high temperatures. Three, alnico magnets. 
which is really a acronym for aluminum nickel cobalt. These also have a good resistance to heat, but they can be easily demagnetized and are not used in many applications for that reason. Four, ceramic and ferrite magnets made from iron oxide and barium or strontium. They are very strong and inexpensive, very hard to demagnetize, but they are very brittle. Next, we have temporary magnets. These are magnets that are pretty much made from anything that behaves like a magnet when it is in a magnetic field, like paper clips. The third type of magnet is the electromagnet. These are made with a wire, usually copper, coiled around a core material like iron to form a solenoid. The magnet is charged once an electrical current passes through it. A simple homemade magnet, take a copper wire, coil it around a nail, and then take the two ends of the wire and connect them to the positive and negative terminals of a small battery. And you have an electromagnet. Now how many of you have heard of the National High Magnetic Laboratory in Florida? It is home to the world's most powerful magnets. First off, when measuring the strength of a magnet, it is common to use the Tesla or Gauss unit of measurement. One Tesla would be equivalent to 10,000 Gauss units. The Earth's magnetic field is around 0. 0.00005 Tesla. A small bar magnet would be around 0. 0.01 Tesla, whereas a big electromagnet would be around 1.5 Tesla. The magnets they have at MagLab go up to around 45 Tesla. That's around 1 million times the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. It is so powerful, in fact, that it can levitate objects that you would normally classify as being non-magnetic, such as water. Because water, by the way, is to a certain degree magnetic. Want some cool information on magnets? I encourage you to read through their website as this is another facility no one really talks about. Now there are really two types of magnetic fields generated by the Earth. The geomagnetic field generated by the Earth's core and the magnetic fields that are generated between the Earth and the ionosphere. Now, if the energy of the Sun powers our bodies, which generate an electrical charge, which in turn generates a magnetic field, keep in mind that electricity can create a magnetic field and a magnet can create electricity. The heart plays the biggest role in our acoustic and electromagnetic biofield. And this energy field, this aura, as some may suggest, is normally only detectable with certain equipment. Although some claim to be able to see the auras of others, even themselves, either with their own two eyes or using aura photography. So this magnetic field, this area of energy we have around us, the question is, how does it affect us and everything around us? Do not think that this field of energy is confined to a three to five foot bubble around you. That is only one layer. And it can affect other people, animals, and plant life. And the more people you have together, the greater the intensity of the field. I'd like to mention the studies done by doctors Charles Alexander and John Davis at Harvard University in the 80s during the height of the Israel-Lebanon war where they took a group of meditators to focus on reducing the conflict in that area and lo and behold they observed a 40 to 80 percent decrease in violent crime at the peak of a war. Much of their work has been documented such as the paper they published entitled the Maharishi Technology of the Unified Field and Improved Quality of Life in the United States, a study of the First World Peace Assembly, Amherst, Massachusetts, 1979. The collective practice of the Maharishi Technology of the Unified Field by a group of approximately 2,500 individuals in the USA was found to result in a holistic improvement in the quality of life throughout the nation, as reflected by reductions in violent crime, motor vehicle fatalities, air transport fatal accidents, and fatalities from accidents, suicides, and homicides, and by improvements 
and important national economic indicators. As a group, folks, we can do many things. The key is love, gratitude, that positive energy that keeps our energy fields healthy. Negative emotions, that energy will dampen that field and make you ill. Many of you are familiar with Reiki, right? The Japanese technique of laying on hands for healing, stress reduction, and relaxation. You see, a smart practitioner would wash their hands in ice water after treating someone because that person's negative energy can stick to your skin. You can walk by someone, brush shoulders, and you will pull energy off that person. You have to wash that energy off. Think about how different you would feel taking a cold shower right after work or right after being around a group of people. This is a great stress reduction technique that is often overlooked. Much better than coming home to yell at your spouse, the kids, and the dog. Now it's not so much how our magnetic fields affect everything around us, it's more of how everything else with a magnetic field affects us. Cosmic rays, of course, cause fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field, thus changing our moods and bodily functions. I'm telling you, more and more people will begin to feel the agitation of these atmospheric and magnetic changes. In the meantime, you can use magnetic fields to improve your health. You can use magnets to charge the water that you drink. Because most of you are drinking dead water, a very dry water. To make the water wetter, to make it vibrationally better for you, for better absorption, you use magnets to charge the water. You can get magnets for your shower and faucets to do just that. You can get rare earth magnets to put your food and water on top of. You can stand on these magnets, practicing standing meditation or qigong on these things, and it will enhance the effects. You can wear magnetic anklets, bracelets, and necklaces that will improve circulation and detoxify the blood. Folks, understanding magnetism and using it to enhance your quality of life in combination with grounding techniques, you are going to reverse the aging process. You are going to improve your state of consciousness because you will be able to think at a higher potential. When you walk into a room, you will be able to overpower other people's negativity. You will be able to attract the things that you want faster with less resistance. And you will be able to repel those things that you do not want. Remember, the universe does not care about what you want. It only responds to how you feel. And if something makes you feel good, it will send you more of those things that make you feel good. If and when you feel bad, it brings you more of what causes you to feel bad. It's that simple. We are living far away from the way God and nature intended us to. So there should be no question of why we feel the way we feel, why we act the way we act, and why we treat each other the way we do. Ascension? No, I think we need to take a few steps back before we try to take that step forward. 